five. All right. What is up? Holy smoke. Sorry about that, guys. That'll be the last time I ever, ever try to schedule my live stream. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> guys, we are live just to let everybody know. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all. Um, if you're just popping on, thanks for coming back. And um, let's get this show started. So tonight we have Irvin. Irvin, how do we pronounce your last name, bub? Kesem. Kesem. Oh, that's easy enough. Yep. That's yeah. easy enough. I, I didn't know. I was like, I, I was going to say Irvin, uh, but I didn't, I didn't know how to say your last name. So I didn't want to say Yeah, I get butchered either. all the time, but I answered anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, so <clears throat> tonight, uh, guys, I'm Andy. That's Greg. Over here next to me, hey. to my right, is Irvin. And Irvin is going to be talking to us all about all his... He's done so many cool things. Whoever is listening to this, turn their volume down, please. Can you, I, I have a little uh, feedback. I heard it. And, um, tell me, guys. Tell me if you're watching. Is uh, Awesome. Thanks, Gary. Uh, is everybody... everybody uh, no echo. Do we have no echo on the stream? Tell me if you're out there and we have no echo, please. Tony, what's going on? Gary, Khan, Lucas, Brian. Thanks for coming back, guys. Thank you all so much for coming back. So, um, Greg... How's this week, Ben? How's the past past couple of weeks, Ben, brother? Good. Been busy. Been doing a lot of uh, man glitter making with a chainsaw and some yard work when it's not pissing rain. But other than that, taking it easy at work, you know, killing. How about you guys? Ah, I tell you, I haven't been doing much. I've been, um, well, you know, we've got that secret secret project going on and um so i've been doing a lot of a lot of sitting in front of the computer working and it's really been cutting into my detecting time but you know that's how it goes it seems like every time it's great weather or something i have something that i'm working on that I, is soaking up all my attention but that being said when it is done greg it's going to be so worth the wait right i mean it's going to be worth oh, it oh right? yeah buddy yep so, i might have to buy a new hat for that occasion Oh, nice, Irvin. So, how you been? Tell us. New hat, new shirt. I'm good. You doing good? I'm uh, good. so how how's your how's your week been? Uh, been wet, but I uh, haven't got out much this week. But uh, getting out occasionally. I haven't been out a whole lot. I haven't found nothing good locally, but uh, I'm doing some good finds throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, so, um, guys, if you don't know, Irvin. Irvin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My first, our first topic is, who the hell is Irvin? So, who the hell are you, Irvin? <laughs> who the hell am I? I'm just a normal guy that likes metal detecting, plain and simple. But apparently, some people think that because I, some of the things I do are what a lot of people dream of doing. Um, I do a lot of traveling to metal detect. Uh, I drive ten hours to Virginia three or four times a year to. Uh, hunt Civil War relics. Uh, spend a couple weeks in Florida on the Treasure Coast. Uh, been to England. I'm going to Scotland this fall. Uh, South Carolina in January. Uh, more Virginia. Local hunts. Do a lot of seeded hunts. Um, I mean, I like seeded hunts when there's nothing special going on because they're fun. They're fast paced. They're they're just something out of the ordinary a lot of people don't like them but i like them to fill in the day fill in the time meet people you know i've, I've got to know a lot of people by uh traveling and detecting and i'm getting invited to hunts all over the place i mean it's like people i know are sending me links to hunts here's another one here's another one i can go to hunt now almost every weekend if i wanted to wow. it's, it's great it's uh, you know i work in the like industry and skilled trades so it, yeah. it, it paid for my hobby. I'm almost ready to retire, uh, you know, and this is what I'm going to be doing to fill my time, metal detecting. And I want Irvin's boss, though, the amount of time that he travels to go detecting. Like, I need that time off, man. <laughs> uh, my boss is great. He knows I'm almost done. He knows I don't care anymore. I'm just going through <laughs> the motions and putting in time. And he knows. So as long as I – my job is to rebuild parts for the machines. 
So if I know I'm taking three, four, five days off, I make sure there's a bunch of rebuilt parts. So if somebody needs a part while I'm gone, there's spare ones on the bench. So wow. they're they're happy as long as that's you know. Okay, so Urban, they let uh, me what I want. Real quick before getting too deep into it, what is your machine? What what machines do you go to? What machines? <laughs> um, my main land machine is a CTX 3030. My other main mach main land machine is an XP Deus, uh, which I bought that for traveling because it fits in a carry-on bag. My backup detector is an AT Pro because it's good for land and water. Uh, I got a GPX 4500 that I take down to Virginia for the high mineral soil. And I've got a Mine Lab X Cal for the water. Wow. So I pretty much got everything covered. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy, you know, instead of opening up the big cabinet and all the guns being in there, it's always detecting equipment. <laughs> yeah. The lights come on, the angels sing. <laughs> I got a walk-in closet that's all metal detecting stuff. So, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so Irvin, tell us uh tell it tell us um you said you've been down. You you said you 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 hunt the Treasure Coast. You hunt uh, you hunt in Virginia as well. Yep. So yep. how often do you come down to the states to detect, guys? Irvin is from uh, Canada, by the way. Yeah, I'm from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, right across the border from Detroit. Uh, Culpeper, Virginia, is a ten hour drive. I go there three, four times a year, a couple times in the spring, a couple times in the fall, uh, DIV hunts or the just go detecting hunts. Um, in the fall, I went on another hunt with another guy that puts on smaller hunts. So I did the two DIVs back to back and then a third three day hunt with another guy. So there was nine days of swinging in Virginia. Uh, I found a really awesome find in Virginia at uh, the second DIV. It's a Civil War soldier's ID tag. And what it is is they didn't have dog tags until World War One, so this would be like a precursor to a dog tag. That it's that got, what's on the uh, screen is the uh, ID tag, I believe. Um, um, it says against rebellion on the front, and on the back it's got the guys, all the guys' information. Well, right so, now, guys, I have um, I have his his uh, his finds right up on the screen, so um, you you should be able to see them. So. Uh, so tell us some about uh, some of the other finds that you you are uh, proud of. I'm just gonna let them scroll by. So um. yeah, I, uh, Civil War breastplate. You know, I found that last year. Um, shell fragments, fuses, uh, buttons, buckles. You know, the, all the stuff that people hope to find. I mean, I don't find a lot compared to some of the guys that go down there. Some of these guys would walk away with a hundred bullets. You know, I mean, I find a dozen and I'm happy. I found about 40 at DIV this year. So, you know, it, it, it all is what it is. Um, uh, when I was in England, when, when I Sorry, was in England, I don't need to laugh. I just con posted. Uh, so Irvin is a swinger. So he's trying to be a comedic guy there. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I was in England. I found a Roman coin that uh, the Romans, when they invaded Europe, they would set up their own towns and they would mint their own money locally so the coin is local from where it was found and it dates from 270 to 273 ad so are so those like all your hammers uh, uh, that were on the screen you dug all those hammers yep i dug all the hammers uh, <sighs> uh, another thing i found an 1859 gold half sovereign um a saxon era brooch bronze with gold gilt it's uh 600 to 650 ad you know, um, and, you know, I find uh, a thimble from the 1400s, a, a beehive thimble, it's called, from the 1400s. Just all kinds of neat stuff comes out of the ground over there. And, it, and it's yeah. funny, the story with the brooch, I was hunting about 50 feet from my buddy, and I dig this thing up, and I rub it off a little bit, and I don't know what it is. I'm looking at it, and I take it over to him, and I say, uh, what do you think this is? He's looking at it, we're both like, well, it's probably a piece of junk. It was only about a foot deep. So at the end of the day, we go back to the van and the two guys that we met over there, I take them and show them a handful of coins and they tell me what all the hammers are I got. So I go back to, the, to our van and he says to me, he goes, did you ask him about that brooch? I said, nah, it's a piece of junk. Well, go ask him anyway. 
So I walk over to the van and says, oh, yeah, I got this, too. Looks at it. He goes, you know what that is? It's a piece of junk. He goes, no, he goes, that's Saxon era, 600 to 650 AD. He says, that's an awesome find. Wow. It was the best <laughs> find of the week. Wow. Man. That's crazy. Yeah. That's it's luck. You that know, is insane. Luck. The, the golden half sovereign I found. Uh, it was the last day of the hunt. We went to the field in the morning, and it was plowed. And they deep plow over there, so the furrows were quite rough. Well, we were out for about an hour, and the farmer knew we were coming, so he sent a couple of his guys out to disc the field with the tractor. At the end of the day, about an hour before the day, I, I got this gold coin. Well, the funny thing was, I, because it was fresh disc, you could see there was like two sets of footprints within four or five feet of where this coin was. So I always, I always say metal detecting is mostly luck. doesn't matter how good you know it's your machine, how good of a detector you are. If you're not lucky enough to put your detector over it, you're never going to find it. That's Very my, true. Yeah. That's my thoughts on it. Yeah. Other people have different opinions. Yeah. Uh, you have um, uh, a very wide, I want to say, array of uh, awesome finds um, that people only probably dream of finding. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you yep. found you found bucket listers that in America that Americans have on their list that have never found. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Irvin's Irvin's relic room is probably like the Smithsonian man. He's probably <laughs> got like laser security there. You know, a night watchman protecting all that treasure. Most of my stuff are just in boxes. I put the good stuff on display. The rest are all in boxes, some display cases. You know, they say I'm just a normal guy that likes to detect. Yeah. <laughs> you should. You know, you should. Like, you should have a dedicated room for your finds. Just because oh, just the, really. the finds that you've sent me to share with um, the viewers – uh were freaking amazing like, thank you unreal uh let's say hey to a couple people out here hold on daniel what's up brother how are you doing pop can dan uh roger diddleberger tony what's going on jonathan russell uh richard jesse uh chad how are you doing michael boyles what's up my brother donna how are you doing anthony uh, let's see. Oh, John Moss is watching. How's it going, John? Um, thank you all so much for hopping on, man. Uh, Irvin's a really awesome guy, really awesome detectorist, and, and it's really awesome to be able to share, uh, you guys, with you guys, how awesome that is. Um, he, he did, he detects all over the world. If you're just jumping on, he detects, he's detected in Europe. He's de he detects in Florida, Virginia. He just, he travels and detects and, um, he does things, he goes places that we all wish we could. So kudos to you, Irvin. That's freaking awesome. Um, thank you. Yeah. We were just covering who the hell Irvin is and, um, some of the things that he's found and it's amazing. It's amazing. Not truly. No, I mean, all right. You know what? Let's, I know it's going to be crazy. It's going to be a good time. Irvin. We might as well let you start here. Seated hunts. Seated hunts. I love seated hunts. They're a great way to fill in dead time. You know, when you're not going on a trip for a natural hunt, they're fun. They're they're fast paced. They're they're just something to do to use your detector. You know, uh, I I enjoy them. You meet a lot of people. You have a lot of fun. Nobody takes it serious. You know, and it opens up doors for you. You know, you meet people that you never would have met before. You know, and it's just, they're great. I mean, um, Radio World has a nice big hunt in Toronto on Woodbine Beach, uh, June 15th or June 16th. You know what? That's a big hunt. That's a great hunt. I think Greg yeah. and I are going to broadcast that hunt, huh, Greg? What? Wouldn't that be nice? Greg? No, sadly I can't. Well, maybe uh, Irvin will broadcast it for me. Well, I'm going to need some like live. If Garrett, would just, if Garrett or somebody would sponsor me, I would gladly go. We need Sorry, boots on. Listen, we need it's boots on the ground. This year. Who's what'd oh. you say? I say it's sponsored by Garrett uh, this year. Oh. Last year was my lab and Garrett. This year it's just Garrett, and they're gonna have that purple haired, uh, whatever her name is up there. Joslyn. Joslyn. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Relic yeah. recovered. That's it. <laughs> but, um, 
there's a there's a big hunt in Ontario this weekend. It's uh, Southern Ontario Beach Hunt. It's up near Hamilton. Uh, it's a good hunt. It's you know it's all silver. Every hunt is silver. A little pricey to get into, but it's a good hunt. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it. Um, and the club I belong to here in Windsor, Sun Parlor Treasure Seeker, we're having a summer seeded peach hunt at uh, Leamington, just outside of Windsor, on July 27th on a Saturday. If anybody's interested, it's going to be a great yeah. hunt. Going to be going to be four hunts instead of three. Lots of silver, gold detectors, prizes, lots of fun. I'll and you can come hang out with me and Biggie. That's the best part. That's it. Right hey, uh, Pac and Dan's gonna be at the uh, at the uh, the Radio World one. He just said, <laughs> "Yeah, Irvin, you're going to Toronto, right?" Yep. Sweet. Yeah, I'll be there. So, uh, uh, I wish I could go. Yeah, well. Hey, Greg, why aren't you going? We need somebody up there. Literally, I'm serious. We need somebody. We need boots on the ground. We need to be able to broadcast that. There you go. No, honestly. I, I hate going into Toronto. It's like three hours away, and it's just it's a different world down there. But I don't care. And, oh, I, camp, you know, I camp 20 minutes the, from the Cheddar. beach. Oh, What's that? Sad. I camp 20 minutes from the beach. Yeah, I know, but... See, Ir Irvin said he'd give you a ride, and, and look. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm yeah. saying is, hey, hey, all I'm saying is we need boots on the ground. I need, uh, I need people out. I need... Live interviews. I need we. That's the kind of content we're trying to put out here for people, Greg. You know, it's true. I mean, look, I this love, I love what good. we're doing here. I love what we're doing here. But I want, I want boots on the ground. I want live interviews. I want live detecting events. I want to share all of that with the people like you who apparently can't go. Whatever you're three three hours away, Greg. You can go. What is it? Twenty bucks? Fifty bucks? Come on, bro. Guy, this we're talking. Hey, Irvin, we're talking about a guy, Greg, who uh, literally spent a thousand dollars on a freaking drone, but won't fuck, won't freaking <laughs> exactly. You know, you won't go yep. and spend fifty dollars for a seated hunt. Shut the hell up, Greg. Seriously, get your ass up there and let's get some <laughs> oh, live Greg, interviews. Hey, 10, put some comments in there, guys. If you want us to see some, do some live interviews on some live metal detecting events. Seriously, drop those comments. Tell us yes, so we can get Greg. Greg, we're gonna start a little fun. And I'm going to put it up. We're go. going to start a little donation fund for Greg uh, <laughs> to be able to get to this seated hunt so we can get these live interviews. All right. So if you guys want to donate, my PayPal is AJ836018 <laughs> at Gmail. And you can go ahead and drop them $5, $10 donation. How much is it, Irvin? How much is that hunt? It's 50, oh, my God. 50 bucks, and I'll put in the first five bucks. All right. $50, <laughs> $50 and oh, he's got the shit. first five. Somebody drop my PayPal in the comments. Somebody. All right, I'm gonna do yeah. it. I'm All just, right. I'm just hoping my wife isn't watching upstairs because uh, I'll be in some heat. She'll be like, "I told you that drone." Blah 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 blah. <laughs> but I've, I've been fortunate, you know. It hasn't been too bad. Uh, there, hey, Greg, I, I literally just dropped my PayPal so in the comments, nuts. guys. Seriously, <laughs> let's get Greg to that event so we can get some live boots on the ground interviews. Seriously, because that's what we're trying to do with the show. Anyway, Irvin, no, I want to say though, Irvin, honestly though, because uh, I love seated hunts. Um, I've been to a few of them myself, and um, I can I can honestly say uh, I have met so many awesome people through seated hunts. Yep. I've been uh, I've you know I've gained a lot of knowledge about machines that I weren't wasn't aware that were out there. Um, you know, you go to events and you might see somebody swinging like a Nocta Macro Amphibio say and you may have never even heard of Nocta Macro until you went to that event and there's, so there's a lot of there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, learning there's a lot of com com how do you say that com com commodity. Camaraderie. Camaraderie. yeah you, you guys know <laughs> that's the I'm American saying. English they just don't understand Irvin <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so I, but but that that's the thing and then on top of that you spend the 50 bucks, whatever, to get in and pay for the seated hunt. And then you go home with, you know, you know, a bunch of silver that you didn't have before. And everybody knows that, you know, we all love precious metals. So silver's awesome. Gold's awesome. So, um, True. yeah, yeah. I, was at yeah was I was at a seated hunt last fall and uh, I walked away with a detector and a Garrett carrot for a 30 or $40 hunt. 
Yeah, I was there. Yeah, you I was. There. I wasn't too happy. Everyone's like, "Oh, I won the pinpointer," and then five minutes later, "Oh, what do you know? I won the detector." I was like, "You, buddy." <laughs> well, you, you want In know. other words, I'm not going to broadcast live here. I wasn't yeah. too happy. Yeah. I, was, I was glad Irvin won, though. He's a good shit. Yeah. <laughs> No, and you know what? Like, Irvin needed any more damn detectors, right? <laughs> I, I, I got an amphibio sitting in my spare room. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet because I don't need it. My God. Hey, why don't you let uh, let old Greg use it? He he can break it in for you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love the Nocta, man. I do. I do. I love mine. I love mine. We I was out swinging it the other day. We were We had about an hour and a half to kill, and I was out swinging it. And I, I found like a, uh, I found the, you know, a mason jar lid and some other stuff. I didn't find any, you know, I modern coins and stuff. But the f the point that I'm trying to make is, I, I mean, I, I love it, and it does, and it, you know, uh, you can set it up just the way you want. Uh, you know, you if you like the tones that come out of a garret, you can set your amphibio up to make the tones at the tone breaks, you know, that the garret does. Mm -hmm. So that's always a plus too. So. And yep. it's deep as hell. Like seriously, I think my amphibio will hit a. Uh, it'll it'll smack a dime right in the face at fourteen inches. It'll smack that son of a bitch. It will. Mm -hmm. It will. <laughs> so. Just give it a new one two there. Bap, bap. When you talk back to mama, bap, bap. it's like when you like when you talk back to mom. She'll hit you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 seriously. Oh. So yeah. Anyway. So oh, first off, uh, now moving along to the next topic. Guys, I'm going to tell you before I even do this. Soon, as soon as I get some free time, I'm going to make these cool little things that every time um, something happens or whatever, uh, I'll be able, like, we're going to go to the treasure in the news. I'll have a cool thing that says, you know, make some noise and pop on the screen. But I just haven't done it yet. So soon. But I will. Um, so, treasure in the news. Guys, we're talking about... Uh, Greg, fill us in. Did you do you know the this the, the Aussie story here? Okay, so I've seen a couple posts. Uh, guy was out looking for gold, and then all of a sudden, he found a chunk of gold the size of this giant measuring tape, worth like a hundred grand. Yeah. That would be incredible. I yeah. pay off my house. Uh, I want to say that it's it weighed in at like. Um, what is it? 141 or I can't remember. I don't want to say it wrong. I have it on my computer somewhere and I forgot. I think I forgot to put it in the, in the system. Of course I would forget something because I'm really good at forgetting stuff. But check that nugget out, dude. It's like it's almost as big as his hand. Yeah, that's incredible. Oh, it's man. Free. I wouldn't even know what to do. <laughs> uh, well, I have some cleanup to do, I'm sure, and then carry on with my day. That was found with the Mind Lab GPX. Yes, it was. GPX 5000. Yep. And uh, the guy uh, didn't show his face. He didn't want to be seen, but it was found in Australia. And I was doing some research, and nuggets like this are found about four or five times a year by metal detectors. Like, that's unbelievable. I just, I couldn't imagine. And I mean, I, I've seen some even, you know, the size of a golf ball or whatever. And you know, it would still be unreal. But the thing is, though, okay, put yourself in that position. What do you do with it? Yeah, what do you do with it? I mean, how sick would it be, you know, this sitting on your mantle, a giant rock that you found that's worth 100000 or do you sell it? Greg, there's no way I'd put that on my mantle. If anything, it'd go in a safety deposit box, <laughs> you know? I, 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 well, I, I'm things sure. are I safer in my hometown. Irvin said he'd sell it. I'd split oh, it I would sell it in a You'd sell half of it? Yeah, cut it in half and sell half of it. But you can only imagine. Here's the thing. I would only imagine that, yeah, this guy found that freaking huge nugget. Hold on. Let's put it back on here real quick. So this guy found that freaking humongous nugget right there. And uh, he must find these nuggets you know, not like that big, obviously not that big, but he must find, you know, a lot of gold throughout the year if he comes across that nugget right there. Well, yeah, yeah, you just don't go walking out your front door and find that. That's a lot of time and research. There, there is a TV show, I don't know if it's on Netflix, I got one of them uh, Cody boxes, 
But you can look for this show. It's called Aussie Gold Diggers. And it's all about these guys in Australia that go out and, de- go out and detect in the desert in the, in the southwestern part of Australia. They're out there with their GPXs looking for gold in the desert. And they're pulling up nuggets. Half gram, gram, five gram. That's nuts. I would love yeah. to do that. It's like three seasons or something like that. It, it's a great oh. show. That is huh. insane. Could you imagine? I'll have to try and watch that. I might have to YouTube it. I yeah. had a fella on. I had a fella on um, uh, Vogus Prospecting, um, Chris Vogus and uh, Bogus, and he he was on the show, and I I actually learned how to pan gold at on that show. But um, the, the 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 what I'm trying to say is he does that, and he he finds gold. I see his posts all the time. He finds so much freaking gold. So, and he lives in Australia, but I was talking to um, Daniel Camacho, who runs Arctic Diggers up in Australia. I don't know if you guys seen, he was featured in an online magazine not too long ago. Daniel's a really great guy. He was on my show not a while back, and he uh, he has a friend who finds, uses a detector and goes and digs and, and finds all kinds of gold in, Aus- in Alaska. So Yeah, you can, you can do it in uh, Nevada. Just outside of Las Vegas, you, you go out in the desert there, and there's places that you find gold in the desert. Well, let's go. Yeah, that's what I say. Let's okay, go. shut up, Greg. Shut up. Listen. <laughs> listen. I knew I'd hey, get you going. Hey, hey, I Irvin. knew it. When I, hey, Irvin. When I retire, if this dude, I'm going there. I already got it planned. <laughs> listen, Irvin, if this guy, shots. if this guy goes detecting you with you in the desert but will not drive his ass up to three hours to go do a do a live event for me i i will smack the shit out of him <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> but anyway that gold uh one more time i gotta put it back up there one more time that that hunk of gold right there that hunk of gold was found over 18 inches down that's what they said. Yeah. That's what that's they nuts. said. Yeah. That's crazy. Sorry, I had to put it back up there. We just have to appreciate how freaking huge that thing is. Like, it's as big as his hand. Well, have you ever seen that one? I, th- I think they call it, like, the boot of Cortez or something like that. I think it's in a, actually in a Vegas casino, and it looks yeah. like a cowboy boot, but it must stand, like, 10 inches tall at least. Yeah. I've seen that. Jesus. Pretty crazy. That is crazy. I was wondering if I even had a slap uh a slap sound on my store. Sound my effect? Sound effect. <laughs> I don't think I Wait. <laughs> let's uh let's let's move on to the lander water machine. Irvin, so you obviously have a separate machine for each job, land and water. Yep. Well when so, I when I had uh my V three I before I moved up to the CTX, I wanted a water machine. So I bought an AT Pro and you, you, you can't beat that for a water machine, you know, for waiting, you know, I mean, they're, they're good. I think they say for 10 feet or something. I mean, yeah. they're, they're great. They're great for the average person. I mean, I love it. I, I've got uh, an X-Cal for the little bit deeper water that I bought last year. Um, but I, I still like the uh, AT Pro. I mean, I'm going to get some, try and get some use out of it out of my X Cal and some deeper water this year, but you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, that's a dedicated machine for water. You can't beat it. That's what it's for. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the top of the line. I mean, every, the pros use them, you know, guys that do that for their living. Yeah. Yeah. My, my good hunting buddy, Joe, he, he swears by it. I mean, we've gone out to the beach. I mean, it's where you go too, right? But he tends to, Going over the good stuff, you know what I mean? It makes you wonder, like, oh man, did I miss that? Or is my machine not good enough? Or you never know, right? So Yeah, you don't. I know he loves his. And if, if I could get find a deal on one, I probably I would try and pull the trigger on it for sure. Yeah, yeah so that X I cow. It, I got a deal on it, I couldn't pass up. Yeah. yeah. I seen I seen one time um this guy posted that he had bought an X Cal for fifty dollars. Um, and there was just something like, like the wire, something was wrong with it. And he, he called mine lab up, bought the replacement part and it was like another 50 or 60 bucks. And he bought a X cow for like 110 bucks. 
That'd be crazy. That's a hell of a vibe. Yeah. That's a hell of a steal, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's the thing. When I was shopping for a machine, I, I initially, I, I went with the AT Pro because it is capable of water. Like, I don't know if you've ever looked where my town is, but like, I live right on the Great Lakes. You know what I mean? I'm 15 minutes from, you know, the lake and then I can drive, you know, an hour and a little bit and head down Irvin's way and hit the other lake down there. But I, I wanted something that would do a little bit of both just so I had that option. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure there's for the same money, there's probably a super good land machine, but then you're limited not going in the water. Right. So exactly. I kind of weighed the options and that's what I went with in the end. And it's been good to me anyway. And there's some good market, good uh, machines on the market that are like the Amphibio in the water, mm -hmm. on land. Uh, a lot of people like the Equinox for both. Um, you know, there's there's some good detectors that are good for both now. Uh, the maps, yeah. you know, the, so they're out there and they're yeah. good. They're not uh, they're not junk machines. Yep. Yeah. My, mm -hmm. I, I mean, my Amphibio. Uh, granted, I haven't um, taken it taking it swimming yet but i am planning on going um this soon uh this summer so um but that's that's where it's that's where it's heading see that's the way i see it is like um they're they're these companies and make no mistake guys there's two companies that are running the show right now and it is not garrett and it is not whites anymore folks you know it is uh in my opinion and in my honest to god sole opinion it is Nocta Macro and Mind Lab. Those are the two companies making big yeah. changes, making big things happen in the industry. And, yeah. and if you try to argue that, the only argument I'm going to see is you might say XP Deus. XP. But I am... XPs are great machines. Don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking them whatsoever. But what I am saying is they are very limited because they are not a water machine. You know, you can the, take them in the water. Okay, but they're not. But you have to buy accessories for it. Yeah, the case and everything. They don't yeah. come. They don't come where you can just take them in the water unless you buy the accessories, right? All, all you need is a piece of copper wire and run it so it's outside of the water and it connects to your headphone. You don't need the remote control. You can leave that in your car. Everything's in your headphone. You don't need that remote. Control. Okay, but you can't put your head underwater. The uh, if you have the puck. For the WS fours, that puck is waterproof. The oh. WS five full headphones, they're not waterproof. So you can, <laughs> so can you, so you can take the whole machine or the puck, and then you don't even need the copper wire, huh? Well, no, you got to have the um, the copper wire, the wire. out of the water to be able to transmit wirelessly to the puck. Okay. Yeah, because the wireless doesn't work from out of the underwater. Okay, you know. so you cannot fully submerge yourself underwater without a copper wire being out of the ground. Okay, honey. Right. Without yeah, a no, because there's the head, no, you won't work totally submerged. Okay. That's but where are, I'm this is they, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. That's where I was going. But the with puck it. the puck is in your headphones. Right? The puck connects to your headphone. So if you're just waiting like you do with an AT right. Pro, you're you're not submerged anyways. You just need a wire that goes from the coil up to the shaft. Well mm -hmm. okay, so okay. What I'm saying now is if anybody competes right now with Nocta yeah. and, and, and Mind Lab, it's XP Deus. That's, you know, okay. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I would say. Okay. Irvin's the king of the machines. I don't think you're going to get any bad opinions by Irvin. <laughs> well, it depends which machine. I don't know them all. But well. the, Deus, the Deus, I know quite well. Uh, I've had it for three years. It, it's a great detector. You know, uh, if you live in England, you're going to have both a CTX 3030 and an XP Deus. They both get the same depth at maximum depth, but on um, a solid pasture, the CTX works a little better. On plowed land, softer soil, the Deus gets a little better. So they have both, most of the guys over there. And if they're going to use plowed field, they'll use one machine. If they're going to be on solid pasture, they'll use the CTX. Oh, and... <laughs> and Oh, I was going to say also, Irvin. Um, did you see that they this they at the uh, detectable they just did up there that the, the big old hoard was found? Yeah, I seen that. That was nice. Knocked a macro and mind lab. 
the two the two brands that were in 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 finding the horde but that's what i'm saying so i mean i'm not saying i'm not saying there's that because i own a pro and i own you know the 400 and i own the bounty hunters and i own i may not have the plethora of machines that you have but i do have an array of machines and what i'm saying is um I'm not knocking the AT Pro by any means because it is what 100% still relevant in the hobby. Like it is still a 100% awesome machine. The AT Max still a 100% awesome machine. But I'm saying that these companies are not making strides forward like Mind Lab and like uh, Nocta Macro. Correct? I mean, I mean, I think we could agree on that. See. I think, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not talking shit about Garrett or whatever. Sorry, lack of a better term. But like, my equipment. You know, I had the AT Pro, and you know that ad for the AT Max came on. You know, they walk through the woods and they jump off the big rock and they're through the water. And oh, I got wireless and blah blah blah. I was like, oh, it sucks me right in, like the Red Rider BB gun in the store window. You know what I mean? Like, I had to have it. So, you know, you buy it and whatever, and and it's been a great machine. But you know what? There's things about it. These other companies, you know, Nocta, MindLab, you know, they're all putting out these multi-frequency built-in battery, um, you know, wicked light machines with a straight shaft. And then the Max, all it really had is it's tuned a little hotter. It's got wireless headphones and yeah. it's still got the same you know curved shaft it's got the same head unit that can snap off from two screws and it's it's got that the worst part about it and i've already replaced a couple of them are those stupid battery holder yeah. like i don't know why they couldn't have changed something like they it's a good machine and yeah. i enjoy using it it's easy to use it's turn on and go but I feel like when they came out with the Max, I, I feel like they were a little bit under the mark of where they could have been. Listen, so Greg. I'm thinking I'm kind of I, I I have geared equipment, but you know what? I'm not like super onto them. You know, if there was something else that came along, I would definitely be able to switch. But I, I, I don't know, like for Garrett to stay relevant, they need multi frequency. They need built in battery. You know, a yeah. smaller, more rugged unit, and whether they can, yeah, whether they actually do that or not. But I mean, the thing is, there are a lot of Garrett followers. Do you know what I mean? I was at a hunt last weekend, and I would say eighty percent of it was AT pros, yep. and you know, the other ten percent was Mind Lab Equinox and the few CTX, and then the other ten percent was like, uh, you know buy it at the hardware store or radio shop type thing, just, yeah. you know, entry level things. But I mean, the, the hunt there was dominated by Garrett machines and, you know, they have those people that are diehard Garrett people, you know, their grandpa had one of the old buzz boxes. So that's what they choose to use that brand. You know what I mean? I mean, there's, there's brand loyalty and that's, that's totally cool. But I mean, when it comes to, if you're very serious and, you know, that's the thing. The price of batteries is just insane anymore. Yeah, it is. It's like eight, eight bucks for like a six pack of the stupid things. Like it's getting expensive to run the max. You know what I mean? For the amount of batteries I'll probably use this summer, I could have a one with a built in battery half paid for. Dude, Greg, I, I, go I, ahead. Irvin. I buy the uh, rechargeable uh, uh, NIM H batteries or whatever they are. I buy mm-hmm. them and I use them. They don't last as long as a let's say a Duracell or one of them but you go out for the day you got two sets of batteries you're, you're good yeah you that's them. true yeah because I mean that's the thing now that I have the max anyway you got to sit there and charge up your headphones you know what yeah. I mean like before the AT Pro you just throw some batteries in it and you go right because it has the wired headphones but um, I'm going to interject real quick. Greg, uh, you know how I feel about that whole thing because I, I, I like Garrett machines one, uh, but I also know exactly you and I've had this conversation personally, and we probably said a little less nicer things in a private conversation about that. Uh, Garrett needs to step up their game. That's a hundred percent fact. There's no other way around it. Yep. If they want to become a, re- if they want to stay a relevant company in the next five years, 
They have got to do something. They cannot put out another stinking AT Max that's uh, basically an AT Pro with turned up gain. Okay? It's exactly the same. They added a wireless unit. Well, that's cool, but you got to understand wireless people were wireless two years before the Max even came out. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. wireless technology was out way before the Max. And so they were even putting out a machine that was already behind in technology even though it's supposed to be some new awesome machine from garrett and it was just basically an mm -hmm. at pro jank jack jacked up uh game you know i mean really let's be honest i mean and and, yeah. and i'm not saying it's a bad machine don't get me wrong because by no means is the at pro a bad machine right but mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what it is good machine. right so uh they've got to do something they can't keep yeah. going where they're going or they will not be a relevant uh, company in five years. They won't be. No. And the no, thing they is, they be. have, they do have great service, but I mean, it's, I, lately I haven't had good luck with a couple of their things. Like, again, I'm not crapping on them. I use geared equipment. It's just it's what I chose to buy when I first started. I, you know, bought the Max as a secondary machine there to my AT Pro. And of course, you can see back on the wall here, my daughter actually won that in a contest. It's still brand new. She's still a little young to use it, but... Make sure there ain't no batteries I, it, in it, Greg. It's, it's good equipment. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, you know, to take it to the next level and compete with these other machines, like, you know what I mean? Five years ago when I started detecting, I mean, Nocta was around and whatever, but... It wasn't like as boom, boom, boom in your face when you're on YouTube or anything, right? Yeah. It, it wasn't advertising out there like all the Garrett machines and such. Yeah, and 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 another thing is um, with the Garretts is uh, like I said. Now I I I like I, I'm not knocking them, but my thing is who the hell leaked to Mind Lab that the Max was coming out because. It, Garrett dropped the Max, and a month later, MindLab dropped the Equinox. Like, yeah, they had they I had mean, to know, right? Don't you think they couldn't have just been a coincidence, right? Well, even if they did it, though, like, I mean, I know I've I've never swung the Nox, but I've seen it in action, and I can say honestly, it's a great machine. Um, it would definitely be a machine that I would be interested in obtaining if one came along at a decent price or you know just the timing was right on it um i'd love to just be able to you know if you could go rent one for an afternoon and give it a go before you bought uh, you know that'd be awesome if there was stores like that there are I but, mean, maybe I mean, not where you live but there it's are. not it's not really popular like that here i think there's one in toronto where you can rent stuff if you you know you lose a ring in your lawn or whatever but right um I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'm not knocking Garrett. I, I do enjoy using their equipment, um, but there's just some things they should have tweaked in the max, in my opinion. No, they not tweaked. No. <laughs> tweaked is the wrong word, Greg. I'm, okay. Yeah, really I'm sorry. I'm not trying. They needed a whole new freaking redesign. They needed to say, you know what? We need to get rid of a lot of this weight. We need to make our we need to make it, you know, rechargeable battery. We need it smaller. We need it, you know, we need to make a machine that is going to be more relevant in five more years than what the AT Max is, you know, because it's just not. And and they will. They will. They Obviously, they know this. They have to know. If they don't know this, then there's a big problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, then maybe they should tune in. <laughs> then maybe they see. This is just in. like a, this is like a male version of the View right now. You know what I mean? You know, there's no Rosie. There's no Whoopi. You know the the Dais. Uh, <coughs> the guy who owns Dais, he went to uh, to Soro, I think, and he said to him, "You know what, guys? Everybody over here loves your machine, but this is what everybody wants now. You know, you guys need to make some changes." So the guy basically told him, if you know so much, why don't you make your own detector? So he does. He made his own company. He does everything in-house. Everything is all done. Nothing is farmed out. Everything is all done. Uh, the coils are wound by robots at night where everybody's at home in bed. And then they come in the next day and they assemble them. With the dais, the detector is actually in the coil. That's why coils are 500 bucks. Yeah, that's like buying a new metal detector. detector. Yeah. The, the detector is actually in 
in the coil. And the processor that is the detector is the size of a head of a pin. That's how small it is. So if they can do that with their, there's no reason Garrett couldn't do something like that with their own. Makes, yeah. you, makes you wonder you why know, the hell detectors are even so big right now. Like why why they're such a huge, you know, like if it's that can be the size of a pin, the brains of a detector, then why the hell is there so much extra plastic and weight? You know? Well, because you do need a lot of room for the battery though too, right? Like yeah. I'm just thinking the max or whatever. I mean, the size of the batteries is the majority of that box. But... I do, I do see what you mean, but honestly, it would be sweet. Like if uh, Garrett or MindLab or whatever would make like a fully kind of wireless machine like the Deus. Like that'd be awesome. Well, yeah. it can't be too long it before would. it is that way, all of them, right? Like really, like they got to yeah. know that. I mean, we're, we're talking about a time in, in the world where cars drive themselves. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about a time in the world when uh, – Artificial intelligence is getting to the point of almost out of control. You know what I'm saying? Where we got to like stop and say, we go any further. We're not going to be able to do anything about this shit, you know? So we got to like, you, you, seriously, I'm dead serious. Like that's real stuff, you know? Like, so what I'm saying is <laughs> if they can do all that, like we can get detectors that are waterproof and uh, you know what I'm saying? Like that are, that are uh, um, yeah. technically advanced. Now it's who the hell, what? Let's let's sign a petition to have Elon Musk build a, a metal detector. Yeah, I bet he'd build a friggin' yeah, awesome one. Tesla. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It'll build its own power as you swing by. It'll drive. It'll it'll walk itself, dude. <laughs> so you should call him up. Be like, hey, this is Andy O'Neill of Fast Five. <laughs> yeah, we need a new. Uh, we need you to build us a, a metal detector. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd love to be a personal assistant. <laughs> a Model 3, that's good for the family. Uh, Sorry, I know Ford, or, uh, Irvin's a Ford boy, so. Yeah. Better get with the times, Irvin. Those Teslas are mean, bad mamma jammas. <laughs> they really, they're like driving, a, they're like driving a, a, a rocket, dude. It's like, oh, you press yeah, the, there's, there's no, sweet. there's no, it's not like a, you know, like a combustion engine. It's like you press the gas and you freaking go. You, you can get a Instant model. You, yeah. You can get a Model C right now or Model 3 or whatever it is. It's like $35,000. It's 300 bucks a month in payments. It's like, uh, well, maybe US, but that's right. like $180,000 Canadian right now. Oh. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I'm saying is that they're really, really not as out of reach as, as you may think, you know? No, uh, that, I know. I know we're getting off topic here. I, I got, happened to work on one the other day doing some graphic stuff and I was looking at it. It's just like, it's unbelievable. It's the sweetest looking ride. And like, it's just got like an iPad on the dash and like, oh it's, man, it's, it's amazing. I love it. I, I, I'm trying to but talk no, my wife into figuring out how the hell we're going to afford, you know, to just do that. Just, just do it, man. I want one so bad. <laughs> just buy yourself a Camaro. You won't ever regret no, it. I, I, I'm never, I, listen, I you do. know what's so cool about that dude? It's like, if it's like pouring down rain out there and, and you're at like Walmart or wherever your Canadian big Walmart store is, <laughs> Maybe you guys have Walmart. They're everywhere. But uh, yeah, we have Walmart. Oh, okay, okay. So, but if it's like pouring down rain and you don't want to walk out to your car, you just press a button on your key and the car drives itself to you. You know. Yeah, I, I tend to melt when I get in the rain. I'm made of sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Okay. So let's move on to the last topic of the evening here. Yeah. Bucket list, Irvin. I know you've dug a bucket. Bucket list there of probably off of everyone's list. So, is there anything you would like to find, even though you maybe don't have a bucket list because you found it all? I wouldn't say I found it all, but I never had a bucket list. I like to dig everything: coins, jewelry, uh, relics. I, you know what? I don't have a bucket list. I never did. I find cool stuff and I get excited about it. Um, I want to find some treasure though. Like yes, you know definitely. Um, sunken charger that type of stuff that's one thing i want to do yeah so tell us about that i know you had mentioned to me about uh you know going pirating or whatever you'd like to call that on a boat um through a friend uh i got the offer to go down to florida in the summer 
and go on a salvage boat that's looking for treasure from the 1715 fleet, which is, as soon as I mentioned to the guy, the beach I detect, he told me right away, he goes, that's the greatest spot you want. That's the spot you want to look for treasure. That beach I was on because that, and you know, he invited me to go out one day on the, on the boat and see what they do. So yeah, that's, you know. Didn't you say you ran into off. Gary Drayton out there? Yeah, actually the beach I was on, I was, uh, Parked in the parking lot, packing up my van, because I got a van that's a motorhome. It's, it's, it is kick-ass. Like I see. And uh, I'm packing stuff up, and there's a guy loading up an SUV next to me. And uh, I say, how you doing? He just looked at me, and he's got a bandana on, and he's got one over his face. And I, before I close the side door of the van, I said, any luck today? And he just shakes his head. No, doesn't say a word. So I back up the van and I start to pull out. He comes walking up to my van. He takes his face mask off. It was it was Gary Drayton. He goes, oh, he says, I got to keep my face covered or I get mobbed on the beach. And he says, I don't usually talk to people because I got a distinctive voice and everybody knows who I am. So the way I look at it, if he was hunting that beach, it's got to be a good beach. Holy shamoly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a, what, what is it? A top pocket find there, eh? Yeah, yeah. Top oh, I love the top pocket find. That's like my new word. I, I hope he doesn't have that like copyrighted because I like to use that one. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so uh that's pretty cool to meet Gary Drayton. Almost like in the wild. You know what I mean? Yeah. Irvin and I we got to meet him at, at the uh Radio World event in Toronto last year. Yeah, we did. And, you know, that's even crazier that you say that because like you met him. And you were in America, so the chances of you actually meeting him in America, you know, at all, yeah. meeting him at all, let alone meeting him while you're out on a on a trip, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. Yeah, that'd be that'd be insane. I'd love that. It, it was, you know, I mean, to me, it was no big deal meeting the guy because to me, he's he's just. A guy like me and you and you and he's metally text. He just made it big. Yeah. He probably fangirled over Irvin. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, he's just a guy like the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, 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 I thought of that uh, actually when we were in Toronto there. I was talking to Nugget and the Aqua Chick were there. And like, honestly, I used to watch your videos every waking second. And I'm like, oh my God, these guys are celebrities. But then you meet them and they're like the chillest, cool dudes. You just hang out yeah. and you chat. At first, you're like, "Oh my God, there they are!" But then yeah. it's you just hang out. It's like you, you know, met your buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They I got met lucky KG and Ringy. Got sponsored. And might you might be that one day? Hey, we can only hope. Everybody, that's I it. mean, if that's what you were, my life, that's your goals. You know, keep after. Or uh, you know, knock the macro. If you're watching, here we are. <laughs> uh, I tell you, if that's, that's your, if that's your that goals, guy, keep after guy. it, though. You know, that's what you want. Keep pushing. That's the way I see it. So, yeah, it's true. A uh, bucket lister for me is anything seated at this point in my life. I just want a seated coin. I don't care. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. You know, you know what? It's an odd bucket lister, and it probably isn't a hard one to really obtain, but I want to find a Merc Dime. That's one odd little thing I've never found. Oh, well, you really? could, I mean, when you come down or, you here. you know, a Saxon brooch or, you know, a breastplate or something. I mean, I'm sure I could dig one up over at Irvin's yeah. house, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised <laughs> you haven't found any being around Sarnia right across from the States that you haven't found any Merc Dimes. Oh, stray bullets. <laughs> 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 uh, I tease, I tease. Uh, no, I... I found a couple of American things. Actually, my oldest coin is an 1832 uh, half stack, uh that's from the state. And um, I got an 1836 uh, large set too in the one video. It, it's, it's crazy because, I mean, yeah, part of this, the area where I found those coins wasn't even built at those times. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I don't know. If I if I had like a real awesome bucket lister, I would probably say it would be like a Civil War plate of any type, whether it be like a buckle or a breastplate or something. I just think that would be awesome. 
For sure. I've never found a Civil War play, uh, buckle or breastplate or anything like that. Irvin has, and he's freaking Canadian. So what do you, what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> he's a damn Canadian, and he's fine in that. But, but I just I, I'm just going to go get one of those like little trailers and hook it up to Irvin's uh, cool little RV there. And he can just tow me wherever he's going and all this, you know. Well, make sure you metal detect him. And then hopefully he won't notice. Detect in front of him because he obviously is not leaving anything for anybody else. Okay. (laughs) No. His detector is like a Hoover vacuum. It finds everything. (laughs) Which I'm not copyrighting bridging the Hoover boys. Uh, all right, fellas, I'm going to have to get out of here. It's getting late. I got some stuff to do. Um, Irvin, thank you so much for hopping on. Greg, you know the drill. We're going to keep in touch. I got to talk to you. We yeah. got more stuff to do. Um, all right. Well, thanks for the invite. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Great time. Thanks for coming, Irvin. Yeah. No and uh, guys, thank you all so much for joining in. And uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks because uh, I can't get talk Greg into going every week. Apparently, he will get in trouble. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Uh, don't forget, True. don't forget the, don't forget the PayPal donations for Greg to get to the event. Oh my god! So could, I'm so, in for five bucks. Uh, I've already, hey Greg, I literally have gotten three payments already. So you are going. No, you have yeah, not. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. And uh, so we're only going for fifty bucks. It's really <laughs> easy. We we can get him fifty bucks. And uh, you, um, so. Uh, don't forget that, and uh, and that was just a uh, uh, off the off the hook kind of thing. We just like I just seriously started that because um, I really want to. I really I really want to do some live broadcasting at events, and uh, why why what better? That's a great one. That's a great event. You'll get to meet all the celebs, dude. You got Digging Canuck. You got uh, Redbeard. You got uh, all the other <laughs> you. Hey, dude. But then you got all the Garretts are gonna be up there too. Yeah, maybe Steve Moore will be here and see the talent. Yeah, hey Steve, Steve's cool, cool guy. Yeah, so we'll get my you there. My hair. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You gotta get noticed. <laughs> We're gonna get you there. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Tune in in a couple weeks. We'll have another guest and another cool show, I'm sure. Um, and uh, all right, see ya. Get on. See you guys. See ya. Hey, what you doing? Oh, nothing. Just uh, heading into town with Mike. Uh, we're going to head out for a little uh, celebratory drink tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we just closed the deal with Warner, so I'm, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go to Warner. Yeah. Outside, it's like God let me dial up the weather. Got the whole crew here. I ain't seen some of them in forever. It's one of those never forget it, better stop and take it in kind of scenes. Everything's just right, yeah, except for one thing. You should be here. Standing with your arm around me here And cutting up, cracking a cold beer Saying cheers Hey y'all, it's sure been a good year It's one of those moments It's got your name written all over it And you know that if I had just one wish It'd be that you didn't have to miss this You should be here